Good morning, everyone. Hazel has a new wand and a new on a crown. What are you going to be for Halloween, Hazel? Anna. Would you like to tell them about your dress? Yeah. Okay. So, guys, I have a cape, a pink cape that goes to my Anna dress, and it's really cool. And and I'm going to be, and I'm going to wear my crown in Halloween and a semi wand. And have an Elsa wand. And how are you going to do your hair? In braids. Of course. And I'm also going to wear lipstick. Lipstick. Awesome. And I'm going to wear eyelash. Are you? Did you change your mind? You told me I couldn't put mascara on you. I wanted eyelash. Okay, so you do want me to put mascara on you? No eyelash. Oh, just eyelash. I think you mean eyeshadow. Eyelash. Yeah. Yeah. Eyeshadow. Okay. Cool. And and my mama is gonna be so proud of me. Of course, as always. Guys, I'm gonna show you my pink cape. Okay, go get your pink cape. So, good morning. I wanted to do a quick vlog to update you on Jude. Um, I think the last update I gave, we were telling y'all that he's doing really good. Okay, yep, there's the cape. And for those of you Frozen fans out there, you recognize that cape. That's the cape that she puts on before she goes to ride off into the snow to find her sister. Yeah. Isn't that right, Hazel? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yeah. I love your Nana. I know you do, baby. So, um, okay, I'm going to do a little vlogging about Jude. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, we started the Intuniv about a month ago. Uh, for the first two weeks, it was incredible. Just really calmed Jude down, but maintained his personality. Um, just took so much anxiety. Uh, it's seemingly off of him and out of this house. And so that was really good. Um, then we started to deal with aggression again, and it seemed like it was a little bit more intense in regards to biting. Um, so Jude was doing some very intense biting, kind of like, um, more intense than he has in a really long time. And becoming very defiant, too, like we were having a hard time getting him to do anything at all. Um, brush his teeth, get out of bed walk from point A to point B, and to be quite honest, I got very depressed and um, just very, very down about the whole situation and not really knowing what to do. And so um, I had read and also watched some things on YouTube about, um, it's hanging up, but we'll get it in just a minute. Watch out for my coffee too, okay. I had read some things about combining a low-dose stimulant with Intuniv. Uh, for wider coverage and better effects for the symptoms of ADHD. So, talked to his doctor, we decided to do low-dose stimulant. Well, when he was on the stimulant, he was okay. He was very, very anxious, which was just kind of made me even more down um, as a mom and just pretty upsetting some things that he did on the medication, like uh, we went to Chick-fil-A one day, and he just stared in one spot because he was so overwhelmed with the atmosphere. He was just even more anxious than he normally is, and, uh, like, he wouldn't swallow. He had spit in his mouth and just kept it in his mouth for probably 45 minutes, and then he was just, like, literally frozen, and he had to hold on to my arm a certain way, and if I moved my arm at all, he would just have a all-out panic attack, so... That was one little display of his increased anxiety. And then when he came off the medication, it was absolutely heartbreaking. He screamed and he cried and he was aggressive and just out of control for about um, two to three hours. And so that was really, really difficult. Um, hello, Daddy. Um, so that whole so that whole he runs my vlogs every time go away <laughs> so public apology from my mother for my father um anyway so that was really really hard and um 
Yeah, I, I can't really describe like how you feel when you just feel like you've exhausted. Don't go away, go, go. When you have exhausted, um, just you feel like everything um, with a situation and especially a situation with your child. Uh, but it's, you just start, hopelessness starts to settle in and then of course depression soon follows. And I think what I learned in that whole thing is when a person yes. starts to lose hope, um, you know, it, the emotions that you feel, the darkness that you feel just becomes really, really overwhelming. And so for those of you out there, I just want to make this, um, this observation and just this statement is that, um, if you're feeling hopeless, just know that things will get better and, um, reach out to people for support. Don't isolate yourself and withdraw because you need as Good much support morning, everybody. as you can during that time um, because if you just keep on slipping further and further down into the situation it can be really I scary so um, okay sweetie I'm almost done so we took him off of the stimulant and um, it took I feel like a couple of days for him to kind of come back to his normal self and normal meaning back to the in tune of state of being the new in tune of Jude, you know, calmer but still defiant and aggressive. So, but not that extreme aggression, extreme irritability, extreme all that stuff. So, um, contrary to what I really wanted. You know, want to do for Jude. Hazel, go over there, please, with your daddy. Thank you. Um, I uh, felt the need to put Jude back on Respiridone. And for those of you who feel a need to comment about Respiridone negatively, just please save your comments unless you have personal experience uh, with Respiridone in your body or with your child. So, just want to put that out there because I really don't want to hear what you've read about it on the internet. Um, Risperidone is an antipsychotic drug, uh, a mood stabilizer, a mood stabilizer used for people who have autism, schizophrenia, and uh, bipolar disorder. It's supposed to level out the moods, keep there from being such high highs and low lows, which is what you know through this past three years of Jude's life, I've just realized. Jude is more than just autistic. I don't think he's bipolar, but he has such intense just um, impairment from mood. And his mood, he, he's very, um, I hate to use the word irritable because he's such a great kid and, um, and has so many strengths, but he is. He's, he's very irritable, he's uh, very sh short-tempered, and he doesn't have a lot of patience. And that in, in brings on lots of behavioral problems for him. So he just doesn't have the tolerance that a you know a typical child his age has for like if the uh, tablet or the iPad you know just gets hung up for two seconds and doesn't work quickly. Like he gets very upset, or if someone around him is crying and that annoys him, like it really upsets him. Um, if we ask him to sit in his chair, you know, things like that, that a, a typical child could cope with, Jude does not cope with. And so, all that to say, I realized Jude really needs to be on the mood stabilizer. Now, we took him off the mood stabilizer this summer because it stopped working. And the mood stabilizers do have side effects, and you have to have their blood checked uh, like every six months to make sure all their organs are still functioning properly, um, which is another reason I didn't want to put him back on it, but we've just been forced to go back there. Um, however, when he was on it, we never saw the effects of the drug swallowed whole, because at that point in time, he could not swallow a pill, and so now he can. So we've reduced the dosage from one and a half milligrams to a half a milligram daily. He's been on Respiridone, swallowing a whole since last Friday and he was sick over the weekend so he was very docile 
And so we didn't know if it was him being sick or the medication. Uh, regardless, it was a nice break for him um, to not be disciplined so much. It was a good break for us. It gave me time to kind of snap out of my depression and sadness and hopelessness and just feel relief and a break from the situation. And um, so this week, he, uh, when he started to feel better, he has still been defiant and aggressive, but not nearly as much as he has been. So we're very hopeful. He's taking half a, uh, he's taking 0.5 milligrams of risperidone in the morning <laughs> and a two milligram um, in tuna <laughs> in the evening. So we're really hoping that this combination will be life-changing for Jude in a good way. <clears throat> and we will be able to see um, Jude's little personality emerge and blossom and, um, and he can just really take flight in school and in his, um, his um, social surroundings. So that's the update on Jude. Please pray for him as uh, we continue these medications. Pray for peace for us and continued wisdom and guidance and, um, and hope, really. Even when things get bad, just pray that still we'll, we'll have just even a little flicker of hope left so that um, we won't just shrivel up, all of us, Jude included. So the really cool thing about... Um, being in this situation with um, not alone, with a spouse, with family, with friends, is that you have other people to kind of um, talk sense back into you when you've just been so overcome with sadness about a situation. So like I said earlier, I just encourage those of you who have a situation that just seems seemingly hopeless, just just hang in there, surround yourself with people that love you, and um, don't be quiet about it. You've got to talk about it. Um, and then, of course, most importantly, just know that God loves you, and God has a plan, and I know it sounds cliche, but it's so true that um, we just read this in our BSF notes this week, that God, he, Jesus, he never watches us from afar, but he orders and he enters into our um, the situations of our lives. And so if you can just believe that by faith, even when it's hard emotionally, it'll get you through anything. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you most importantly for praying for our family.